Now, inside of our webpage, we're going to have our articles. And sometimes if we have an article, and especially if it's a news type of site or maybe a blog type of site, we want to list things like who wrote it and when it was written and maybe what category it belongs to and a variety of different things like that. Well, here, if I'm looking at my content, I have that ability and I have that information. But what I don't have is a way to kind of group that information. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that real quick. It's very simple, and you might even look at the article and go, wow, I wish I could put a header there like I had for my main page. And the answer is, you actually can. You can have multiple header tags inside of a web page. So inside my article, I'm going to come in here and create header. And then where I have the end of my sample heading and my two paragraphs I use for the author and the date, I'm going to put a closing header tag like you see here. And this is just to kind of group and organize my information. You don't have to have this, but it's a nice way to organize it. And because it is grouped and organized, I can provide styles I may not normally provide. So I'm going to come back into my CSS section and I'm going to say article header. And this is only going to affect headers that are inside of an article tag. Instead of being a pure white, I'm going to make it just a slightly off white just to help it kind of stand out. And I'm going to put a bottom border that way I create a visual separation between the two. So you say border dash bottom. And this is just going to be a simple one pixel border. It's not going to be real big, but it's just going to be something to help create a visual separation. I'm then also going to create a margin on my bottom of 10 pixels. This will help create a little bit further separation, but still allow it to be close enough that we know that the article body is going to be with the header. I don't want to create too much separation because then I start to disassociate the two different elements. So I'm just going to create a small margin. So just a couple of quick little things that I can do to make this look a little better. Now I come in here and reload you'll notice that, oh, okay, I see that small separation just like I expected. I have a little bit of a background difference. I can see that, and that's good. And I'm feeling pretty confident in this. Now, I could maybe want to go out a little bit for my sides. Maybe I want to not have quite so much space at the bottom. I, I can adjust things as I need to. So let's do that real quick. And to adjust my sides, I'm going to do my top and bottom are going to have a 10 pixel margin. My left and right are going to be negative 10. That's because I have a 10 padding on my main. And so this is going to go and squeeze into that area a little bit. I'm going to do no padding on my top and bottom, but I'm going to go ahead and add 10 pixels of padding on my left and right. So this is my CSS shortcut notation we looked at before. Now, if I reload this, my text is still all lined up, which I like. My background goes all the way against the edges. I'm happy with that. I'm feeling a lot more confident with the way this looks. It's still very simple, but I can work with this. Now, a lot of times inside my header, I don't really want some things to stand out. I want other things to stand out maybe a little bit better. I, I just have to kind of adjust. And so what I'll do is I'll say, well, maybe that author and date published, those can be smaller uh, just so it doesn't take up quite so much space. And maybe I want my sample heading to be a little bit bigger so it stands out a little bit more bold. Those are both real easy to do. Now, inside of my sample HTML file, 
you'll notice I already have a class for the article author and the publication date. So I'm going to style those two the same. So I'm just going to copy them here. I'm going to put a comma after my class name. I'm going to select my publication date. And I'm just doing a copy paste that way. I don't mess anything up. And because I put a comma, both of these CSS selectors will provide the same results. I'm going to do font size. And I'm just going to choose 80%. So this shrinks it down and maybe it's too much. Maybe I want to look at doing 90%. Uh, I can do some other things with it, but it just kind of starts to give me a little bit of feel for what I'm doing. So this becomes a real good way to help organize and structure my data. I can use something like article header to make it stand out, or I can use class names to do my selectors. Both work and they're both very efficient for the browser to work through. It's strictly up to how do I want to style and organize the content on my web page.